Okay, so we've got some giveaways. We've got, I think it's seven double passes to Facty Facts. What did you say? Facty Facts. Oh. <laughs> anyway, the show is at 11 p.m. and it's running from, give me one second, uh, March 7th to March 8th. And basically what we'll do with this one is we'll set it out on Twitter and Facebook. So pretty much the first person to tweet or uh, what would it be? put in a notification on Facebook that they want these tickets gets them. Back to you, Jason. Thanks, Moira. <laughs> um, we uh, we now have Ben and Dan. They are from Ben Mellor, the show. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's the name I of, tried is, to call it that. I that tried to call it that, but he was, he was no. really upset about okay. it in the end. So. I've uh, only got Ben Mellor written here. So yeah, sure. Yeah, well, what's, yeah. The sh- what's the show called? Uh, it's called Anthropoetry. No, actually, that was written there. No, yeah. it wasn't. No, it was. Yeah, it Fuck. Was. So that's the name of the show. Okay, cool. And Ben Miller is my name. Yes. And Dan Steele is his name. My name. Hey guys. Hi. Hey hey. You're uh, you would have loved our co-host today, who was uh, Xavier McLeodis. He looks very much like you. Oh right. He has some of this and not much of this. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's jogging in North Adelaide at the moment because okay. he forgot. That's fair enough. Uh, so um, when you said Xavier, I thought you meant the other Xavier. Which Xavier? Xavier Toby. Toby. Yeah. In the Penguin was, costume. Yeah. In the penguin he was costume. here on Friday. Was he? Okay, in the Penguin cool. costume. We share a venue. All oh, right. Is he yeah. still on or is he done now? I'm not sure actually. I hope he's still on because we haven't seen him yet. He's done. He's done. Okay. Oh, you'll never see him again. Shame. Sorry, Xavier. <laughs> yeah, don't apologize. <laughs> it's fine. If you're watching. So um, why why what, what do you, what do you do? You don't do. Like, you have a lot of like theatre people and a lot of cabaret and a lot of comedy on. You're none of those things. Yeah. Describe yourself, you filthy animal. Well, we are in the theatre section, but oh, I, yeah. yeah, just because we had to choose one. Mm. Um, I basically I do words and Dan does music. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Words so, music. Words nice. and music, basically. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a sort of spoken word artist. So what I kind of yeah, it's com- what I do combines poetry, rap, storytelling, a bit of stand up, uh, kind of, and then uh, Dan creates amazing uh, live lute uh, instrumental scoring, some of which I contribute to beatboxing and stuff. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. Excellent. And so you've you've had a few shows already. We've done yeah two weeks already. Yeah. Oh wow. We've got yeah. one week left. This is our last week. So you're doing this three week. of the four weeks. Yeah. So home yeah. straight. How does it feel so far? Yeah, good. Yeah, it's been yeah. going well. Uh, we're a little bit yeah. nervous about this week because we've changed. We were on at six forty-five, and this week we're on at five thirty, which is Ooh. kind of yeah, yeah kind right. of early. So, uh, but yeah, hopefully we just kind of catch students and people coming straight out of work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dive straight into a sweaty and tent and watch some music and spoken word. Yeah, did you, yeah. would you rather a drunker audience or mm, does not, it not really matter? Uh, not necessarily, but just the, just sort of like, it would be good to be on late enough for people, people to, to be there. To be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to be able to leave work. And it seems to be drunk. like, it, it, like our venue seems to get kind of busier around kind of seven, eight, mm. nine-ish, you know, mm. that, that sort of time. So yeah, the early start has been a bit difficult. Cause we, we've done Edinburgh before and obviously there's stuff on throughout the day in Edinburgh, yeah. it starts at 10 in the morning, you know, so a 5.30 slot in Edinburgh would be really good, mm. but yeah, in Adelaide it's a bit harder. So this is your first Adelaide Fringe, I'm yeah. guessing? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. right. And so why, why did you make the decision to come halfway around the world? Uh, well, we were in Edinburgh and we got uh, an email from Adelaide and Perth uh, Fringe Festivals uh, inviting us to apply, so we just thought, we should. Sure. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, do you? So, you've just come from Perth, which happened just before Adelaide. Yeah. Do you get any time off, or are you like straight into Perth and straight away after Adelaide? Or it well, was pretty much straight through. Yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. We had like we had a we had a few days in Perth after we finished our show. Just uh, to, to kind of we designed it that way because we've got a couple of friends in Perth, so we kind of spent a few days catching up with them, and then we came over here. Started as soon as we got here, and then we were running like sort of two weeks straight through. We took. We just took the last weekend off mm. for uh, Clipsal. Oh yes. So we just kind of uh, yeah went took a camper van driving around Kangaroo Island. Oh really? Yeah. Which oh is nice. Like which is why we're kind of both looking uh, kind of a. I didn't want to say. Significant yes. shade, but you're right. like quite similar sort <laughs> yeah, yeah. of bending <laughs> into the curtain here. Nice. How was yeah. Kangaroo Island? Where did, did you go? Great. Great. Uh, did you get stung by any non-stinging bees? No, 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 actually. No. Uh, we went around. Oh, jellyfish. Uh, where did we go? <laughs> Vivon Seal Bay? Bay. Viv- no, we didn't. We, we oh, skipped Seal Bay because we were told Dude. it was overpriced and touristy. But se- like Seal Bay, you know how people go. Oh, no, it, it's like a pet store. Like there are that many seals. Yeah, they just it's a, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah, we saw loads of seals at uh, Admiral's Arch. Oh, that's nice. Instead, yeah. 
and we went we did a boat trip yesterday and went and swam with some dolphins and oh, swam beautiful. with the seal while we were doing that so is that freaky when you see their fins and you're like oh i'm just gonna have to put my faith in the world yeah <laughs> yeah i yeah, yeah. know oh, what's freaky is when they go away again and then you think there's nothing here to because you sort of think if a shark came now these they dolphins might gang up on the yeah. shark yeah. and that kind of protect us or at least be in between you and the shark yeah or, or something <laughs> yeah something yeah right yeah, yeah. but then they, they sort of like disappear after a while and then you're kind of like in open water on your own so do they just go i'm done now and just go away is that yeah. what happens they get bored with you I think they, yeah, yeah, they kind of get bored of you pretty easily, actually. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. They come and have a look, and then you're not very interested because you can't keep up with them. And then they, yeah, yeah. Especially when you're as bad at swimming as we are. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen photos. Do they literally just trail you off the boat on a line? And you just no, no, they just jumped in. Okay. They, yeah, they, there's there's like a pod of dolphins that uh, that fishes in that spot quite regularly, and I think they've become accustomed to the sound of the engine of the boat, so they know who it is. So they come up to the boat and they just sort of swim around it, and and then you could just sort of get in and. Uh, and they sort of swim past a few times and yeah, then right. they kind of get bored and go somewhere else. Is it nice? Yeah, it's wicked. Yeah, it's you amazing. Really good. Slap a dolphin? What? Mm, I've always, uh, I think it would make a sound a bit like a wet watermelon. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. That, definitely. That, <laughs> no, yeah. I didn't get a chance to see. Yeah, uh, no, no, I, I, I couldn't get close enough. Yeah, cool. They keep you just out of reach. I had a. I, I was thinking stroking rather than slapping. I don't know. No, you got to make that noise. <laughs> <laughs> like a, I think I slapped a manta ray once. Right. But then because it was doing this, but they're like some aren't they? Yeah, I, I have this kind of like running bet with a friend that see who can slap more animals. Right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, that almost. I mean, like, generally, that, that just, kind of makes you harder than Steve Irwin. Yeah, I'm you pretty like. hard. But when I slapped the manta ray, it went. And then it slapped me as well. Right. So okay. that was a draw. We'll call that a draw. <laughs> yeah, right. Sure. Um, so uh, so tell us more about your show. So how do you guys do? You split up the show at any stage, or are you just you both working together the whole time? Oh yeah, it's pretty much like basically. So it's a show. It's about the human body. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like uh, it kind of takes the form of almost a mock lecture. Where I'm kind of talking about the human body. I occasionally use Dan. Uh, he wears a quite an attractive. Uh, X-ray uh, skin suit. So, Ooh, I, so I've got body parts to a bit like out. that freaky guy who cuts up bodies on TV uh, with the weird hat, the creepy. Oh, the yeah, guy. Not, not, no, not, not, not quite no, as creepy. no, just like a yeah, not, not really creepy at all. He's basically in a big leotard, basically okay. a big onesie with an X-ray an kind X -ray of on it. anatomy yeah. printed onto Beautiful. it, so I can kind of point stuff out. Yeah, yeah right. so I introduce each bit, each like body part or each like bodily system. And then we and then we do a piece about it. So is it basically. is it a school thing or is it not really? A no, school? no, okay. it's not really. Uh, it's a, I mean, it's, it's not an excuse to tie things together. Yeah, it was, it was an excuse to write poems that were sort of like tenuously linked to the body and, and were about things that I wanted to write about. I understand. So, okay. Yeah. Well, as your things are uh, part of the body, we have a game for you called Awesome Doodles. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's just it's, it's basically just okay. So so Maz is going to draw something on the screen, and your job is to uh, guess what it is. And there's two of you, and you're about. No, I was going to say about body, but this this may not be about the body at all, so I don't know. Maz, <laughs> okay, one clue, is, please. This is going to be a movie. A movie. Are you ready? All right. Okay, it, it may use you, it may not. I'm it not totally sure. will. It totally will. So don't move too much, I guess. <gasps> all right. So there's okay. So I guess just describe what you see is the best thing to do. Uh, shoulder pads. Shoulder pads. Uh, breastplate. <laughs> Judge Dredd. Uh, gladiator. Uh, Iron Man! Oh. Mm. What? <laughs> you look like uh, uh, Duckula. Yeah. Uh, a little bit. I wish I knew what they looked Blue like. Bluebeard. <laughs> um, <laughs> Batman! That's pretty good though. Isn't Sorry, it? I get excited. Get good. Did you do <laughs> <laughs> Transformers. Oh, I think I yeah! Oh, yeah. Nice. That's okay. pretty good. Oh, I didn't get to do my what I wanted to do. Oh, you can keep oh. doing it if you want. Um, <laughs> but you guys were going to do a, a thing for us, right? A song. That would probably yeah. be the best yeah. way for people okay. to discover sure. what your show is. So yeah, um, it would be weird if I was here because I'm not part of this. So I'm going to just walk that way and you okay. just do your thing. Introduce it however you want. To serenade you. <laughs> I no, do, yeah, I'm just going to be, I'm going to be lying on a piano over there, yeah, and you sure, just, yeah. okay, cool, so you guys have fun, and then okay. uh, we'll, we'll plug your show afterwards. <laughs> okay. Right. okay, cool, uh, yeah, so this is, uh, this is a piece that's based on the head, uh, and when we got to thinking about the head, we kind of uh, decided that, uh, you know, it, quite often when we're talking about the head, what we're really discussing is the mind, uh, you know, and we quite often refer to our internal mental infrastructure at any given moment as our state of mind, our, our head state, if you will. Well, my head's a state. But what sort of state is it? Probably not the sort of place you want to come on a state visit. My peasants are revolting and my self-healing physic has failed. So now my state's got me down. 
to the clinic. It's not a personality disorder, it's not civil war, but nor is it two sides of the same house bickering for the floor. In the red corner, a left of centre, fucker of the poor. In the blue, a centre right, who fuck them even more. No, there's more opposition than that. It's a bit complex, seeing life through a lens, concaving in and lacking context. Horizon should be smiling, but they're regularly convex, disengaged from mental politics, distracted by what's on next. My ego's a government, doling out the lashes to those who step out of line from the id-ridden masses. Appease the wealthy super-ego, go where the cash is. To chart these stormy waters is like sailing through molasses. Unwashed masses of desires and fears suppressed, subordinated by a state apparatus. Trying to be socially incorporated, but there's not one ruling idea about to be inaugurated. Just parties pushing policies, I try to keep it orchestrated, but cravings and aversions divert my course unhappily married to this state now I'm filing for divorce cause she's abusive beats me up with shame and remorse because my head state has the monopoly on the use of force But who said this hierarchy is the natural order? Who said being a citizen means I must control my borders? Must I consent to cops in heads and mental prison warders? And those who say dissent is diagnosable disorder? God, I'm sick of this select committee, it's early day motions. I want to be pulled by the people like the moon draws the oceans. Topple the dictatorship that reigns on my emotions. Make following my bliss an act of daily devotion. This top-down mental structure always leads to state repression. An ethical foreign policy that's rooted in aggression a collapsed mental economy that leads to great depression and corporate influence media that stifles my expression so I escape to my dream state a state that's supranational a surrealist anarchy where desire rules the rational awaken from my reverie I wish that it was actual I seem to find more truth in fiction than in factual love fabricated social fabric rips so much is gaping while the tailors tell us tales like all it needs is some reshaping but when a guy's life so desperate he die in flames escape it makes me wonder what state are the heads of our heads of state in So next time that I find myself in a state of great anxiety And the only welfare I want is vacation from sobriety Won't let this nanny state tell me off for impropriety Cause it ain't sanity to be adjusted to a sick society No it ain't sanity to be adjusted to a sick society No it ain't sanity to be adjusted to a sick society It's on uh, uh, till March the 10th, 5 p.m. Uh, 5 30 p.m. at Gluttony in the Pink Bed. Please thank you once again. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>